Hello guys and welcome back to another Toy Command video. So I'm finally starting the speaker build. Now I've made one cabinet already here. Okay. It's all jointed. It's all sanded up. Every little nook and cranny filled, any little tiny bits. Um, this is the front baffle that hasn't been cut out yet because I haven't got the drivers through or the tweeters. So there we go, that's the inside. Now you may think that you've seen a cabinet like this before. So this design, and when I say this, it's very loosely, and remember that, I don't need a load of grief from uh, purists. This is going to be very loosely based on the BBC LS35A. And when I say loosely, I do mean that because the cabinet on this is thicker. Um, this is a 18 mil ply opposed to 12 mil. Um, no internal bracing apart from the front uh, panel because this is so solid and the way I've joined it is very solid and it's going nowhere. Um, the drive unit is what you would say can be used for a replacement for the original um, KEF B110. Um, the tweeters are different. They are from uh, ScanSpeak. Very, very nice speakers. Um, so this is one cabinet fully finished. And what I'm going to do is show you how to assemble the other cabinet. Now, obviously, I haven't cut the front baffle out and I haven't veneered anything yet. So the front baffle is going to be cut out and it's going to be covered in leather. And I'll show you the leather now. So this is the leather I'm using, real quality leather this is. This is used for the upholstery trade and it's uh, it's a Scottish hide. So we know Scottish hides are one of the best hides. So what I've got to do is just to rebate the edge very slightly so I can nip the, um, the leather round so you won't see it and it will just fit seam seamlessly into the front there. Um, and then I haven't chosen my veneer yet, but I've just discovered there's a company just around the corner from where I live called Veneer Hub. And uh, I've seen them on the internet, but I googled it and they're just around the corner from me. They've got an industrial unit on my industrial estate. So I'm going to pop around there tomorrow morning, uh, Monday, and uh, crack on with that and see if I, what I can get there. There's so many different veneers. I mean, I can, there's a type of veneer called a peel and stick. It's basically a, a veneer with a glue on the back of it. And I'm sure lots of people are using that. Or I can use some contact adhesive to glue it on. Or I can use, well, I can clamp it up with PVA, which is a bit time consuming and long winded. So I'm probably going to probably just either use uh, the peel and stick or I'm going to use the, um, the contact adhesive. I mean, I do veneering all the time. So veneering is not new to me. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, oh yes, I've got to put the edging on as well round here. So the edging will go on first, so the veneer overlaps. Uh, and the back will go on first, the back veneer, so the sides will overlap. And I'll match the grain all the way through, hopefully. Um, so let's get cracking. I'll put the uh, camera on the tripod and we'll crack on and do this uh, this build. So first of all, the stuff we need to do this build. So I'm using a biscuit biscuit um, cutter there. Um, you'll see how it works in a minute. And these are the biscuits. So I'm going to use this to join the box up. Now you could dowel it. You could screw it through the side. But these biscuits work really well. So uh, I use these a lot anyway uh, for building stuff. So um, I'll be using them. You're going to need some glue. Uh, a bit of a filler. The filler is only for very micro bits of cracks in the veneer you get tiny little bits where the veneer well the veneer the plywood is uh, is missing so um just like this bit here you can see that there see that little bit there so you get tiny little bits like that so this isn't birch ply this is just hardwood ply from wix's in the uk which is a builder's merchant um quite reasonably ply price 21 pound a sheet and it only took one sheet to build them so um, the two of them. So I bought two sheets, but um, I've got to build some speaker stands to go with these as well at some stage. I'm uh, going to need a sander, some different grade sandpapers, uh, 
I've got a square there, cabinet scraper and a hammer and a few bits and pieces so we can crack on. And in the inside, we, we've uh, I've used some bits of pine to uh, so the baffle will go down there. And that's down here. Um, as again, I've been doing a lot of work in here. Last weekend, I cleared this whole workshop out totally. And now it's in a complete mess again. So I've got to crack on tomorrow morning and get it all back together again anyway i'll stop waffling on and let's get on with the job right so we have our biscuit machine here a biscuit jointer so what we're going to do is we're going to just start by um measuring over with these uh about two inches there in or 50 mil because <clears throat> we want to be able to get all these the same Now this isn't the best biscuit joint you can buy. This is a relatively cheap one that came from Screwfix about ooh, 20 years ago now. Uh, hardly, well I do use it now and again, um, but not that much. And it's, uh, it does the job. So we're just going to go around there, around about 50. Right, so we're going to press this on now. <coughs> That's our biscuit, exactly our, our groove. So these just fit in here. Two of those I put in. There we go. One goes in there, bit further up, and so will the other next to each other. So that'll be just perfect for um, for doing this. So we've got to do all the rest of them now. Now we've done those bits, so now what we've got to do is we need to do these edges of these now. So <clears throat> we need to do the same thing again. We need to just measure over uh, 200, uh, two, two, two inches or 50 mil. So if you was to buy a kit and make these, you can buy these uh, cabinets already assembled for you or you buy them in flat pack. And so I'm not making this from a kit, I'm actually making this totally from scratch. Um, I'm buying them. Right, so um, what we're going to be doing is I've cut all the rest of these grooves already in here. So I'm just going to show you how to do the last one here. So we just offer up the uh, biscuit jointer again to here. Uh, switch it on. There we go. 
So what I was trying to say in the last clip, the problem with this new Sony phone I have is it suffers from overheating, which is a little bit annoying really. Um, because when it's on too long, it overheats. Now it's a very hot day again today. Oh, the sweat's pouring off me in here again. So um, anyway, so um, I'm building this from scratch, as I said, not from a kit. Now uh, the drivers are coming from uh, one company and the crossovers, I've been reassured by a, a guy from another company, which I'll put all in the links below when it comes to fitting all the drivers in and all that. Um, but for now, all we've got to do is just dry fit this just to make sure it fits right. Um, I find these biscuits better than dowels really when it comes to gluing panels together like this. You might have to tinker with it a little bit in case it goes over very slight. It's very hard to set these biscuit jointers up and get them perfect. So I've, I've arrowed everything so I know what, what goes to the front and what goes to the back. Um, there you go, that fits perfect. Yeah, look at that, spot on. Bring that over a little bit. So all I've got to do now is just to glue this up now and put it in clamps and then after that we just want to check for the squareness of the cabinet it's got to be dead square um, so let's get on with the gluing up um, I need some some wet wipes that's just to get the sweat off me <laughs> no this is for cleaning up the glue right so we're going to just pop that apart for a minute now keep that side in like that those biscuits out for a minute. Now let's just get some PVA in here. I like just smothering loads of PVA on. You want to get loads on the surface. You want to make sure that it really does stick well. Now I'm just about to set another YouTube channel up as well. Um, so it'd be good if you all could subscribe to that when it comes to it and it's called the tiny restoration workshop and I'll be restoring furniture on there um, all the stuff that my business produces I'm going to be filming from now on my, my son now has decided to come in the business with me he was a bit unsure at first because he knows how much I, how hard I work and he you know youngsters these days rather be at the football or down the pub so but uh, he's now decided to come in with me so now we're going to be running the YouTube channel we've just set up a new another so we've got two websites now one for the furniture restoration and one purely based on upholstery because um, that's what we do as our, our main business upholstery and furniture restoration that's why building some boxes like this is a piece of cake to me um, as you can see on my videos when I've uh, French polished the, uh, the the turntable. Now I could, I don't have to veneer these. I mean, I could easily do a false grain effect on these. But I thought, I really want these to look the business because they're going to sound the business as well once they're done. Um, we're going to use our silver cladded copper, 10% silver cladded copper cable on it, which we're going to make up. And uh, that's going to be really good as well. There you go. Doesn't matter if glue's going everywhere. We'll just clean that up afterwards. Because remembering, there's you're not going to. We're not polishing this wood. This wood is just going to be veneered after. So it doesn't matter. If there's so you want to clear as much glue off or get all the glue off. It's always nice to get the glue off and keep it nice and clean. But that's that. Same with this sign now. Go off a bit.
So this new phone, this Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV, fabulous sound, got great sound to it. Um, I thought the LG that I was using with the triple hi-fi DAC, the LG V40 was good, but this is really, really good. And the, the, the filming, it's got a pro version of the uh, software on it, and it's got so many settings, it's absolutely brilliant. But the problem is, is it suffers from a bit of overheating problems, which is annoying really, but... Um, I'm quite happy just to, to stick with it because uh, the quality is too good and uh, I don't really want to uh, have to change it really. So um, it doesn't happen too much. It's not too bad. So I'll be out all day. It'll be fine. It's just that if I'm doing a really long video, um, it tends to want to overheat. They're, they're, someone else did message me and say, uh, have I noticed any overheating problems? And I said it was. it, it did get hot on occasions. It's not too bad, it doesn't really bother me. Um, it just gives me a break from the filming for a minute, that's all it does. So let's just get some glue in here and then we're going to get clamping this up. So as you look on YouTube, there's shed loads of people showing you out of an ear. I'll be doing that in the, uh, in the tiny restoration workshop videos that will be coming up soon. We'll be doing all sorts of stuff in that. Um, Showing you how to do upholstery, uh, French polishing, and gluing chairs up properly, how to do it properly. Um, this, this, this channel is going to save people a hell of a lot of money. Um, right, so we've got all that there now. Just want to make sure we get most of the glue out, and then we'll, get, we'll go over them again after to get the glue out with the, uh, once we get the clamps on. So these are only very tiny speakers, so I'm going to be using these in my room because the big speakers that I got, that I inherited from my uncle, although they're outstanding speakers, I put them in the living room and they sounded even better. They were so good in the living room, but in my room there's just something about them that I find just a tad... Uh, I don't know, I can't explain it. So I'm going to be using these with a subwoofer. So I've got a subwoofer in there because these will probably only go down to about 70 hertz, which is which is quite bass-like, really. As you know, the LS358s are not known for their bass. So let's get these uh, these clamps going and uh, clamp this up. Perfect there. So because it's a really hot day, I glued the other cabinet up and it was dry within about an hour, hour and a half out there. I'll just leave it out in the garden to, to really harden off and then we can crack on with the beading around and do the, uh, the back panel. So the back panel is permanently fixed, unlike the LS35A, which is uh, the Rogers make them now where there's so many companies sterling sound sterling acoustic doesn't it was it sterling sounds one of the two and there's, there's a several others that make him make them um although this this probably won't sound anything like one of those um and the reason being is the crossover is going to be different as well so these ls 35 a's they have a sort of blip in the frequency and i'm not entirely sure whether it's up to 100 hertz or Around that, somewhere around that. I, I've, I've read loads up about, I've done so much research on them speakers. And uh, so much goes into my brain and then I, you know, I can't uh, comprehend everything. I can't remember every single uh, detail. But all I know is these are, these will be different. And that's all you need to know. So in effect, these are not LS35As at all. These are a mini monitor that uh, will probably sound wicked, that's all I know. Um, and if they don't, I shall build another set and I shall, I shall mess about with them until I get them right. Um, so all I want to do there is just to give it a slight tap across there. 
that's it, that's it, because it was, uh, was over a bit too much there. Tighten these ones up now. That one, and then the last. So I need to buy some more sash clamps because I had loads and gradually they broke. And uh, so now I've only got, I haven't got in, in many small ones, so I need more small ones for gluing up chairs anyway. There we go, so that's it, we've got that clamped up nice and tight. Now, what we want to do is we want to check it for the squareness. Now, I didn't get this board cut up by anybody, I cut it up myself and I've got a saw bench, but it's not. It's not that accurate so what I did is I cut them up and uh, I, I sanded them in on this on the sanding disc machine there the linisher because it was uh, it, it made it more accurate and I could get them exactly right now there we go so that's that any any bits that just stick over very slightly like that we'll sand off at the end once it's all dry so we're going to measure from corner to corner Right, okay. Spot on that is. Spot on. 354 mil. Exactly the same size as the other cabinet. Look at that, it's perfect. Right, so that's that's done there. I'm gonna, as I say, I'm gonna take that out into the garden now and leave it to dry in the sun because it will dry really quick. Once it's dried, then we're gonna start sorting out the back panel and the baffle. So the box has been drying now for another couple of hours. So I've already cut the back for it. So that fits into there, which we're going to glue in place in a minute. And um, <clears throat> we're just going to cut the front baffle. So the easiest way to do it is just to lay the, lay the box down. So I've got the score on the bench there now, which is taking up loads of space. So all I'm going to do is we're going to put it on in, inside here. So I'll get it dead accurate. Right, now what we're going to be doing is just drawing round the inside of it with a pencil. Um, just like this. already all right that bit down there like so and round I'll show you in a second once we've done it um, go around there get to make that sure that's nice and neat this front baffle you see it's going to be trimmed down that's why I'm doing it like this so um, I, mean, I could just cut it to size but I want you to take it round like that Right now, let's put that over there for the minute, like so. And now here we have it, that's the size of it. So now we've got to cut it on the saw here. In fact, this is now going to have to go onto the floor over here for the minute, while we, uh, while we trim this up onto the saw. So that's the back, we'll put the back up there. Now you can see why I'm naming the new channel the Tiny Restoration Workshop because it's uh, very uh, very small in here. But I think it adds a, it's a good name. It adds uh, to it. It's interesting when you do YouTube channels. You really need to come up with in, innovative names for stuff just to get yourself noticed. And so uh, that's why I called myself Tweaker Man. Right. So we're going to just guide this through by hand. <laughs>
this back onto the bench here. <coughs> So, here we have it there. Now this probably ain't going to fit first because I need to sand it in. So let's have a look. So that's going to be that way around probably. But it needs to be sanded in a bit. Right, so that's what we need to do on the edge there so I'm going to turn this camera around now and point it over to the linisher there there we go right let's just sand this in a bit I'll show you what I mean Let's just see whether whether this works now. If it doesn't, I'll have to tickle it in a little bit more. As I say, the front baffle is going to be cut slightly smaller anyway because it's got to have leather around it. Right, let's just try that way. See what. So if you buy one of these kits, there we go. If you buy one of these kits right off the internet. The cabinets are cut with a CNC machine, which is spot on. But when you're doing it by hand, it's not as uh, accurate as one of those. But still, I mean, it still comes out pretty well. Let's give that slight little bit off of there. There we go. That's the baffle in there. That's the front baffle. So now what we want to do is take that out and put it to one side. And we want to... Um, Put the back panel in now so we're going to lay that down on its back and uh, let's get the right side there oh no that's not the back panel there thought that was a bit small so here's the back panel there so it needs to fit in there nice and tight right okay so we're going to put some glue around this and tap that in place so we'll get our glue here Run some glue around the edge there. Glue around there. Because this is a very tight fit, this back there. I'm just gluing it in place. I'm not going to put any pins or anything in there. It, it's going to stay solid. Um, won't be moving anywhere. Make sure when you're gluing, you spread the glue out evenly all around because the worst thing you need is, uh, the last thing you need is it to not have a contact in some areas. So like I do here, I'll just run a bead of glue along here. Glue's running out, I need to get some more. Run a bead of glue all around like that as well. Always uh, glue both surfaces because it will give you a better contact. When it comes to it, I oh, don't worry. I'll just do it with my fingers. It don't bother me. Just spread it all over. So you see that? So the whole area is covered because that will give you a really good bonding right across the uh, the whole grain there or the, the plywood. Now, a good thing about plywood is it's very stable. It's like MDF, but and this is exterior, so if it got wet, it wouldn't, I mean, it would swell eventually, but, so exterior ply, you still need to treat it with something. Right, so that's that, like that. So now what we want to do is just to get this in place now. Like that. Right, I've just got my hammer there. I've got a, uh 
mallet here just to put that down in place. Now you notice I'm still leaving the clamps on at this point to do this. There we go, get that right down nice and neat. Right now, so we need some wipes now. Give it a good wiping all around. We want to make sure that that's exactly flat all around. So that corner there needs to be tapped in a bit more. In nice and this one. Right, so that's about right there. So I'm just going to make sure I can put some more glue all around it quick. So there's some very small gaps there in the in the plywood there, if you can see it. So that's we'll be filling that afterwards, and a couple of bits there. We just want it so when the veneer goes on there, it's uh, there's no problem with the veneer. So this is the uh, so that's the bottom, that's the top. Turn it upside down like that. So we've got a load of glue in there, inside there that we want to clear out. Get that glue out. Uh, just to get a bit of glue down in there. So we're going to glue the uh, the beading along the uh, the inside of the cabinet now. Because what we want to do is we want to make sure that. Um, So now we've got our bead in here that's going to go in the inside and what we want to do is we want to set it back very slightly so first of all I'm just going to trim the end off a bit on the, uh, on the sander here just to um, there we go so that's going to go up there like that so what we're going to do is hold that against there and just mark the back of it there there we go and then we'll cut that through on the saw here um, so that's our back hole we'll put over there. Come on, there's a bit of stuff hanging out there, let's get that out. So that's one going in there, that's for that side there. Right, so we've got to do another one now for the other side. Now I have heard a set of uh, original LS35As before because uh, my uncle used to own a set back in the 70s. <clears throat> And uh, they they really did sound good. But as I said before, these are not LS3 five A's. These are copy almost and they're not really a copy either the only thing that that really is the same is the uh, the size of the box is really everything else is different but still we'll see how we get on right so we need to cut a bit off of here now that's right the wife walked in on me there <laughs> so i paused it for a second let's carry on anyway 
So we're just going to offer that up to there, trim that down a little bit first. Back on there. <laughs> Same at the top here now. So I'm just going to cut a bit off of there. Put a little mark at the back of those like so. There you go. And just trim it back off again. There we go, that goes in there like so. So now we've got to do is just glue these in place now. Uh, so what we're going to do is, um, first of all, we'll do the sides. Now, because we're putting leather on the front baffle, um, what we need to do is to set the... Uh, get a piece of this out of here. That'll do, like that. We need to set this back a little bit because we want to be able to, because once the baffle's on the front, so the baffles are not gonna have screws in it like an LS35A. I don't like those screws. I think they look really, really horrible. So this is going to be fixed in. It's gonna be glued in place once it's made up and clamped in. Um, so where's my hammer gone now? So we just need to tap that back very slightly. Bring that back that way. Now you you may say to me why didn't I why didn't I just make a whole box? But it was easier to do it this way because I want to be able to cut the baffle out uh, once once I get the drivers because I haven't got the, none of the bits yet for it, and I just wanted to get on with the cabinets and get all them finished and everything. So when all the stuff comes, I can just crack on and get it done. Right, right. So we're getting this a bit because the, the levers around about two mil thick really so we need to take it under by a couple of mil which is about right there so we're just gonna go down there with that so we know that we can then take this off and put some glue in there again these are going to just be clamped in place they're not going to be screwed or pinned or anything just going to screw them just going to uh, glue them in place so get loads of glue all over the surface again. Right, let's get a wipe here. Wipe my head first because I'm sweating. Right, there we go. Clean that off there and as you get our piece again, it's about equal all the way up there, even. Right after this, a little tab that way. That's it. 
Right, so let's get some clamps on those. We need a couple of clamps on those. Just to keep that nice and tight. Okay, clamp that down. So we've got to do the same with this side here. We need to knock this over. We need to get our... best to take your time on these jobs don't rush anything it just I mean on a camera it's awkward because you tend to find that you you uh, you rush things on a camera it's awkward you can't just I mean you could I don't like editing loads of stuff out it just takes too much time so I try to get it <coughs> try to get it right in the first place so I'm running out of that glue so I've got to go on to this one now There we go. So let's just do that again. Make sure that's the same as the other side. I'll just bang it forward very slightly. Check that again. That's about right there. Right, let's get some clamps going on that. And then we need a uh, another wipe just to clear all that off. We don't want any glue hanging about on this bit because we want the uh, the front baffle when it's glued in place to be uh, fit nice and snug. We don't want anything interfering with it. Right, so we've done that. So now all we've got to do is just do glue these pieces in down the bottom here. Now, so that looks like that's the top one. Glue one there again, some on the ends this time. Just make sure you can see all this, what I'm doing of at the moment. Yep, that's fine. Get that in the place down there. Right, we shall get a clamp on them in a minute. What we'll do, we'll just put this on its side. So I'm going to just put this saw down on the floor now, down here. And we've got a bit more room to work with. So it's always organised chaos in this place because it's only small. It's uh, it's always difficult. So we'll get that up like that onto its side there. Get some more clamps. I'm going to clamp this one down again. Like so, that's all right. Make sure that's where we want it. Tap that down there, make sure that's level with the other bit. That's perfect. I need to come down a bit. So what I'm going to do in this case now is I'm going to remove this um, this clamp there because it's uh, it's in the way there. Um, it should be all right to take that off now. 
Which we get to do it now with. Where's that gone? Right, one second. Right, let's take this off. There you go, there you can see the glue in there. Right, that's better. We can get it on there and clamp it a bit easier now, like that. Right, let's just tap that there. So that's that one and now we've just got to do the top one and then that's all ready for uh, just to leave it to dry and then we're going to start uh, using some two-pack filler on all the little splits and the cracks all around it so here we have it it's all uh, it's all clamped up now with a beading around it this is where the uh, where my baffle is going to fit in so I'll be back soon once it's all dry and we'll sand it all up so I've taken the clamps off and everything this morning. Um, so this is the cabinet finish. So all I've got to do now is do the sanding up. Tiny little bit of filling in some of these little cracks in the plywood and that. And this will all be ready for the veneering. And the front baffle there is going to have a very slight little... Uh, rebate around here so then the the lever can just tuck into it and just finish around there on the top and then it'll push in and I'm not going to screw the front on I'm going to glue it in there so it won't be removable but you'll still be able to access the cabinet obviously once you take the drive unit out uh, the mid-range drive unit so um, yeah so let's crack on with that now and uh, we'll start filling it Right, we're going to just take the cabinet and just take the edges off onto on the uh, disc sander here.
right there we have it i've sanded it all all around um i want to get it nice and smooth so we're going to just put some sort some filler out now um just use some two pack just to go over all these little bits And I'm going to pop round to the, um, the veneer place this morning and see what they've got around there. But first of all, I've got to tidy up the mess that this workshop's in. This studio of mine is a bit of a mess. So, let's just start filling all these little bits there, these little bits of the, in the veneer and that. Just go over all of the uh, end grain as well with the filler and then we sand it in and that. Right, so I'll carry on with that and then I'll come back and show you how I sand it up after. So I've now left the fillet to dry. Um, got our sander here. We're going to use some 240, P240 to sand it down. Uh, very fine. It's only light bits of filler on there. Stick it onto our sander there and we'll get cracking on that. <laughs> of what I'm doing there so I'll she'll sand that up and I'll be back soon so here we have the two cabinets finished both of them uh, exactly the same size front grills off front uh, baffles off if I can get that one out so as you can see fabulous job so all we're gonna do now is to get our veneers and uh, start veneering them which I'll do in another video so uh, I hope you like this uh, speaker cabinet build so these are a 5 litre cabinet exactly the same size as the LS35A's 
but as I say, going to be with a Tweaker Man twist. Anyway, thanks for watching another Tweaker Man video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a like. Don't forget to press that notification bell so you're notified each time I upload a new video. And thank you for watching, guys.